Food, like all of us, has the ability to change, be adapted, become something different than before. Usually, this transformation is with the intention to please. It's an unspoken lesson from the food that we eat every day. Maybe someday we'll listen. The crepe, to me, has always been the chameleon of food, pleasing the inner kid with its sweet fillings, and after living a life, no longer finding horror within the savory type. But here in Taiwan, the crepes are something different. Words like variations fill my head. They have changed again to please a new palate. Why would a dumbass American know anything about crepes? Well, as far back as I can remember, I've only wanted to do two things with my life, make movies and cook. I went to college for one, and then stole the tomes of the cooking schools and taught myself the methods and theories. I'm not important here. Finding the difference in the crepes is, and so far, watching this process, it's on point. Crepes are made of such simple things. Eggs, milk, flour, butter, salt. I do not yet possess the powers of literacy, yet we can see that there is more than those ingredients at play here. In all my books, I haven't found baking powder anywhere on the lists. Getting it all mixed up? Nothing out of the ordinary? I'm curious to where this is headed. That batter isn't quite the consistency I know for a crepe. Let's check one last source. Ah, La Rose, the culinary dictionary filled with terms I will never pronounce right. Crepe, a pancake. Well, that was a load of sh Well, Taiwan's crepes are different. Nah, no, fuck it. Let's go get one. I won't lie, getting to indulge in this treat for this episode is going to be nice. The first thing I noticed is that the batter is... Wait, there might be some of you who don't know what a traditional French crepe is like. A traditional French crepe is made up of five simple ingredients. Eggs, salt, milk, butter, flour, blender, fridge. Speaking of thieves, France, the bleh, cake or thousand layer cake consists of simple crepes with a layer of cream between each one and is often introduced as a French cake. Actually, they didn't steal it. It's a common misconception that it's a French dessert when its origin is Japanese baker Emi Wada and was invented around 1985-ish. I just like to pick on the French, because they get so French about it. Alright, let's make our own crepes here. Looking at the batter, I already noticed that it's thinner, like heavy cream. Cooking isn't anything different, really. I just don't have the fancy pants little twirly twirly dealy deal. But a little whirly dirly on the pan, and they all end up of even thickness. I'm not a cooking show, but the process goes like this. Batter, twirly thingy, flip, Plate, repeat. Let's crank them out. All right, we got our French base. Let's get back to Taiwan. My mouth is watering. That batter is so thick, it's got two C's. And give it up for Lao Ban and that technique. Wow. I noticed that the crepe itself is much thicker too. Let's head back to the creative space to compare. We're gonna put the creative space inside the kitchen. Nah, this isn't a regular thing where we move it around all the time. It's gonna be in here for the rest of the season. Uh, the reason being today in Taiwan is 88F with a real feel of 101F. The f Oh yeah, the humidity in this country is over 9,000. All day, every day. So we're putting it inside. French crepes and Taiwan crepes. 
The biggest difference right away is that the French crepes are soft. You can bend these fingers any which way but Tuesday and they'll come back to their original shape. Taiwan's crepes, on the other hand, are a bit more rigid. They don't shatter when you manipulate them, so they're obviously not cast iron. There is a little flexibility as I am able to open the crepe along the folds, but as you can see, I get this one chance to open the crepe and that's pretty much it. Another thing is Taiwan's crepe, I can break pieces off, where if it was the French crepe, I would tear it off. But Taiwan's crepes are not super crunchy. Let me demonstrate. Yeah, all right, all right, you'd say a mukbang channel. So it's not as crunchy as a Dorito, uh, but it's crispy, like toast, but not quite as much, just a little bit softer. In fact, I'm not even sure that you'll hear it, but uh, I'll give it a go. I suspect that there's more here than just flour, egg, salt, butter, and milk. And well, because of our amazing powers of perception, we can see that there's baking powder. So I think we're onto something. I feel it has something to do with the starch in the recipes. But where did this inspiration for these come from? Let's do some searching. Uh, crispy crepes? No. Pure starch crepe batter? No. Taiwan crunchy crepes? No. I found something. Uh, two somethings to be exact. Kue liqueur and apombolic. Both have starch in them and are very, very similar to the crepes. After looking at the ingredients for both Kue liqueur and apombolic, this is what I believe Taiwan's crepes are inspired by, not classic French crepes. Going through recipe after recipe for each dish, I found a specific connection among them all. For mostly all apombolic, there is, in general, rice flour, a non-gluten forming flour. Also contained in Kue liqueur is rice flour, with many containing cornstarch, again, non-gluten forming ingredients. So we learned that in Kue and Apom, there is baking powder and non-gluten starch additives. For demo purposes, we'll use cornstarch. And because corn, murk. All this shit about starch, why? Enter wheat flour and a few other select flours that contain proteins that when mixed with moisture, have the ability to create gluten. Now we're gonna go with your grocery store categorization of flour. And there are in general, three main types. There's bread flour, all-purpose flour, and cake flour. These are categorized by their protein content. Bread flour has about 13% protein with all-purpose... Bah! That's chef talk. Just know this. The higher the protein in a wheat flour, the more gluten it will form. Using our flour, let's make some gluten. Because I want you to see what it looks like, and it's important to understand in our journey to discover the secret about Taiwan's crepes. A bit of kneading and resting that you won't have to see. Thanks to the magic of editing, you'll just have to trust me. And uh, looking at this picture here, I'm the one with the knife. Now if we wash this off, we can see just gluten, the magical rubbery substance that makes bread work. And because of its elastic properties, you can correctly guess that it's chewy. So keep that in mind next time you deep fry something. Higher gluten means a more chewy result. Also, this washed gluten deep fried is called mian jing, a nice, sometimes sweet or savory snack that I first had in Taiwan. Now, let's contrast gluten to cornstarch and my favorite elementary school science lesson. Cornstarch is basically pure starch having only 0.3 grams of protein per 100 grams and no gluten forming properties. Now folks, I'm glossing over big chunks here because the chemical process of how starch reacts when cooking is a video in its own right. The most important part you must know is the application of heat allows for restructuring of molecules to form a rigid structure, giving things a crispy texture, the opposite of its stretchy, chewy counterpart, gluten. Plus the fact that cornstarch has the testicular and ovarian fortitude when mixed with water to laugh in the face of science. So in summation, I believe the higher starch content in Taiwan's crepes allows them to be crispy without the need to overcook it. 
Because, uh, you can make anything crispy if you cook the ever-living out of it. Just like French crepes, there's a no-holds-barred attitude to fillings. Of course, you have your favorites, savory, sweet, like this one, chocolate. But I've been in the heart of darkness. I've seen what the create-your-own category brings. Combinations like butter, cheese, and marshmallows. Cheese and honey. And I observed the horror, but was too terrified beyond the capacity for rational thought to film the combination of chocolate and cheese. Eh, who am I to judge? You eat what makes you happy. A popular savory combination which I would see fly off the burner while filming this episode is something more of a meal than a snack. It's made with your crab sticks, salmon or tuna, peppers, onions, a bit of lettuce, and top it all off with some mayo. And let me say in the future, I'll talk more about this and another veggie, but since I started coming to Taiwan, I've never thought of or seen a more diverse use of corn in my life. The sh** everywhere. I could go on for days about the types of crepes, but I really want to give it up to Lao Ban as they work hard every day. And anyone who's spent time in the restaurant industry knows the grind, and these two are on it. From daily preparation task, after task, making sure service can flow without a hitch, to to general maintenance, providing the ability to cook safely and efficiently. The world around them rages on as they complete their duties, making the business work. So that as a team, they can create and serve their customers. All in all, it's the little details of the shop that make this experience so unique and something memorable about just a crepe. I thank them for the time they put in to master the technique of swirling batter on an iron, and the thought put into the menu and the combinations of ingredients and flavors. The care in presentation and preparation, serving the palate of the local Taiwanese people from older generations to the younger ones. It was a pleasure to get to work with and know these two. And I got to see the little ticks of how the stand works. The simple beauty in just cleaning the iron in between orders is so satisfying. My favorite tick of the stand is the way they test the heat of the irons by randomly dropping water on the plate and seeing if it dances or not, indicating if the iron is too hot or too cold. Taiwan is a huge place and you have a near infinite choice of establishments and foods to satisfy your sweet cravings. And the options for your savory palate are awe-inspiring. Sexy. Demanding of your attention. As you stand there dumbfounded trying to choose which one to eat. The services that bring you the ability to choose anything at such a vast array could kill a man. It's my hope that you get the chance to break the bubble. Come on over and experience the craftsmanship the savory, sweet, and special crunch of Taiwan's crepes. You won't be disappointed. If you're already in Taiwan, I place the address to the crepe store in the description below. Again, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you for coming along on this sweet journey. If you are new here, or you just haven't yet, please consider subscribing, and more importantly, share with the people you think would like to see my content. That helps me out the most. Leave me a comment and I promise I will reply. And if you liked my vid, drop a like. Even if you didn't, a dislike is fine. Again, thank you and see you next time.